What's up guys? It's MedicX21. Um, another video of the service stuff that I'm working on. Um, this is, I guess, sort of a tutorial. Um, just showing how I set up my server to play around with a few things. Um, my base operating system on my server is Ubuntu. Um, it's the Ubuntu desktop, not the Ubuntu server. So I'm running the, the Ubuntu desktop, so it's like a normal Linux distro. Um, there are there is a server version of it and you can do stuff and maybe I'll do videos on that later but I'm running the Ubuntu desktop but then I'm going to show you how I use my VMs uh, which is using QEMU's KVM um, and it's it's a type 1 hypervisor sort of for the most part um, so it, it makes running a lot of my VMs a lot easier and then I'm also going to show you how I implement it by showing you uh, how, installing a VM and then setting up Pi-hole. Uh, Pi-hole is a really nice, it's a DNS side ad blocker. I, I've been using it for over a month now in my house and um, I'll show you how I set it up and I, I recommend if you've got a spare hardware or, or something like this, this may be one of the first projects you want to do and I definitely recommend it. So uh, without rambling too long, let's get into it. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to install Ubuntu as our base operating system. Uh, just simply uh, use like Rufus or anything else to put Ubuntu onto like a USB flash drive or you can boot it from your, um, a CD drive. I use the thumb drive. Uh, you're going to click the install Ubuntu because we don't want to try it, we want to actually install it. I picked English because that's obviously my language. Uh, we did normal install. Um, I did third party installs and then I also selected the update. It just took a moment for my um, internet to catch up. Um, do erase disk when you do this. Um, obviously make sure this is a, a hard drive that you plan to use, but erase the disk. Um, obviously just set it up for whatever user you want to use. I, I skip through mine. I just typically use owner as my username and obviously pick a password. And then I choose to have an automatic login, uh, not require password since it's going to be my base operating system for all my VMs. I want it to always log in for me. Once it's installed, this is the first box that pops up. Um, I usually click next to the end, except for right here for the updates. I don't like to, or the information, I don't like to send my information. So I always click no on that. And you just click done here. And then, um, one of the first things we're going to get is installing the updates and obviously we want to install updates so we'll click through we'll let the updates install um, and then i actually I, I do the updates to this but then i also manually pull up the updates to check again for updates and if in your case the updates didn't come up then this is how you would do it you can hit your windows key or the menu in the lower left pop it up click the updates do the software updater make sure it's all caught up and then I always um, restart my computer uh, to make sure that all the updates are good. Once it's restarted, we got to open up Terminal. Uh, this is how we're going to install the Q, um, the, the KVM system. So what we want to do is we want to run, and I, I've got it typed on the screen. So this is how we're going to install QEMU and then KVM. Uh, just you got to type out this whole long string I got there in the in the white. I've got my videos sped up so you guys didn't have to sit here and watch. Uh, you know, watch this in slow-mo real time. Um, once that's in, we need to add the user. So in my case, both my users um, were already in there, but uh, some of the uh, videos that I saw to show me how to do this, um, one user, they didn't have their stuff in there. So I would recommend doing this just to make sure that the user that you're logged into right now will actually have access to this stuff. So it looks like one of my users was on and the other user setting wasn't, so. So before we start installing VMs, since this is our base operating system, um, I always do static IPs for all of my all of my servers and VMs and everything, I do static IPs. And this is gonna be super important later on when we do Pi-hole. So simply do manual, and then here's the settings that I use. And it's super important that when you are putting your IP in, you do have to put in a DNS. Uh, this is the Cloudflare one, the 1.1.1.1, that's Cloudflare. So that's that's what I prefer to use. But when you do a static IP, you have to put a DNS in there. It won't work if you leave the DNS blank. So now we're gonna install our first VM. 
Um, well, actually, we're going to set up for the first VM. So we click it to create it. Um, this is where we're going to add the folder for where our ISOs are. As you saw on my desktop, I put an ISO folder there, and I just keep all my ISOs on my desktop. And by doing that, then I know where my ISO location always is. So we're going to create the create basically create and link our directory. So I click my desktop. There's my ISO folder. We're hitting open because we're we're putting the folder in place. We're not actually selecting an ISO just yet. So now we go to the ISO locations. In this case, I'm clicking free NAS, but um, this is how you'll do it to install Ubuntu to do Pi-hole after. So I, I did four gigs of RAM, two cores. I set it up for 20 gigs. I typically, most of my VMs I use for 20 gigs. Uh, again, I'm gonna call this free NAS. Yours is gonna be Ubuntu because uh, this is super important by the way bridge your network whenever you're doing your, your vms if you're going to be using it for your network stuff bridge your vms but anyway so we're doing ubuntu because we're going to do pi hole so my interface right now looks a little bit different because i forgot to hit recording when i was on my ubuntu um system so this was sent to us but you're going to launch ubuntu in the same manner so now that we've got the vm up um we're, you're going to do your updates just like we did on the, the previous one. Um, before we install Pi-hole though, we want to put a static IP. It was just like we did earlier with the static IP. So we'll go to the IPv4, we're gonna go manual, and this will be a different IP. In my case, I use 110 for my Pi-hole, whereas I use 100 for my base server. And then don't forget as well, your DNS, set up your DNS. Um, this one I put like a whole bunch of DNSs in. Um, including the DNS of Pi Hole that we're going to be on so that the internet will always redirect through it. Um, I probably didn't really have to do that, but because I don't, I don't use the internet for this VM, this VM is just for running the DNS, but I wanted to have some backups on it. We'll hit apply and then we're going to restart the system. Obviously do your updates. And in my case, I did, didn't record all the updates because you guys already know how to do it. So we'll restart. So now we're going to actually install Pi-hole on the VM. Again, it was super important to make sure, again, you bridged your network and you set up a static IP. Those are the two super important things you want to do before you set up Pi-hole because it automates a lot of things later on. So I've got on the screen, I'm not going to read you guys the prompts. You guys can see them and I'm sure you're going to be pausing things as you're going through. So we're going to, we got to do our updates, which we should have done before anyway, but again, I like to do my updates just to make sure everything is up to date. After the updates, we're going to do uh, install get. Uh, get is going to be how we uh, download and install the, the pie hole. Um, I think it's from GitHub. So we want to click yes and go through that, let all that install. And I know I'm talking super fast, but I, I'm sure my intent is that the video is short so that you can pause it in the segments that you need to pause it. So I understand some of this sounds really fast. So now we've got Git installed. Now we're gonna actually download the file so that we can actually install it. So we just run the sudo git clone command. Um, that's from the GitHub right there. It's super important to make sure that you type everything right. I have a tendency to fat finger things all the time and actually messed up my recording a couple of times and had to clear the screen and do it again because I typed the wrong thing and totally like missed what I like literally like one letter or something like that. It's silly. But so once we've uh, gone ahead and pulled that from the Git, we want to CD into pie hole, which um, there's the folder right there. Um, I just do LS so that I can see and make sure that I'm in the right folder. Now we want to switch into automated and then the install. And then I think I ls again just to check what's in here to make sure I'm in the right folder. Yeah, and then there's the, the basic install. We're gonna use bash to do the basic install. So we just do sudo bash basic install dot uh, sh. And then this is gonna run the pie hole installer. And again, this is why it was super important to make sure we bridged our network on the VM and set up a static IP before we did all of this. Because now that we have the static IP, um, a lot of this is just hitting tab and enter as we go through so i'm just kind of enter and enter and enter work our way through so it's nice here is it see how i mentioned the dhcp and getting the ip address we've got our set already um 
the DNS you can do Google. I decided to put Cloudflare in for mine, and I ended up just putting Cloudflare in. Um, but you you can pick Google, whatever you want. Over here, we're just gonna hit Tab and Enter because we we want all of these boxes checked. We'll hit Tab and Enter as well again, and you can modify this stuff later. This was the area where it was super important about having our static IP because now we don't have to mess with any of those IP changes. Again, we're gonna hit Tab and Enter. This is how we're gonna log into Pi-hole later on. Tab and enter, we'll tab and enter again. We'll tab and enter because we'll let everything uh, go. Now it's just gonna run through. I sped up the video that way you guys didn't have to see her and watch all of it go through. Takes a takes a few minutes, but it's still, you can have pie holes set up in probably less than 10 minutes. And then once it's all installed, you'll see that I do, um, um, oh, this is probably important. You can, you can save this password, but I'm actually going to show you how to change your password. I don't use the default password that it comes with. Uh, excuse me. So right here, we're going to go in and we'll, uh, we're going to change the password. So we'll do uh, pi hole a negative P and then you can type in whatever you want your password to be. And that's the password you're going to use when we log into our pi hole through the web interface. So this is where I was saying a few minutes ago, the NS lookup, I'm just going to ping. Uh, there's a website 888.com. It's a casino website which Pi-hole is set up to block it. And by pinging it, we can't make the connection. So we know that Pi-hole is installed. And then obviously we're gonna go on a web browser. And we're gonna check it as well. So I'm just gonna go online real quick. We'll just go to Yahoo. I'll show you that one, Yahoo is working. And two, you can see that the ads are blocked on the right side. So there's no big bars of ads or anything like that. Google, again, making sure that our internet works and it's nice and snappy. And then 888.com was what I was telling you. Here's what Pi Hole looks like when it blocks it. This is what it looks like when it blocks on the machine that's running the DNS. If you were on another machine, um, it would just tell you it can't make the connection to the website. Um, on here, I'm just showing this is um, if you have like Linux as a base system, this would be how you would set your static IP and then obviously your DNS. See how I'm putting in the 192.168.3.110. That's the IP of the system that's running Pi-hole. So that's where on all of your machines, where your DNS you want to redirect to. Um, I don't show you on here uh, my router because every router is a bit different, but you'll have to go in, if you want your entire network to run through this, which is how I do it for my home, is you go into your router, you go into your DNS settings, and then you select uh, the DNS of 192.168, in my case, 3.110. So that was pretty much it. Pretty simple, straightforward. I know it was, uh, I, I spoke pretty fast, but the intent is that the video, um, you can pause it in the sections you need to pause it to do what you do. And then you don't have it like these gaps of waiting for me. You can just pause it, do what you gotta do. And then you unpause it and you go immediately right back into where we were going. So I know it seemed fast, but the intent is that you're gonna pause this while you're watching it. Um, again, the IP that I used at the end, the 192.168.3.110, that was the IP address of the pie hole that I set up. You'll then, if you want to do it for your entire home and you want it to just come off of your router, like that's how I do, is you'll log into your router, you'll go into your DNS settings, and then you'll set a specific DNS. And in my case, I use 192.168.3.110. And then I use my secondary DNS, I use Cloudflare. So if in for some reason my server shuts off and, and it inevitably happens while I'm at work and I can't like log in. So my wife's always like, you know, the internet's not working. So I use my um, Pi-hole DNS as my first DNS, and then I use Cloudflare as my backup DNS. So if I'm at work and my computer gets shut off or something happens to it, everything just reverts to the second DNS. So my wife, she doesn't even know anything's happened to the internet, but it's nice using Pi-hole because it blocks a lot of ads and it's huge on mobile. I'm, I'm a super fan of, of using Pi-hole ju just on the mobile side, websites and on games. It, j it blocks so many ads, it's great. And then on the websites as well, it's pretty noticeable too. So this is just one simple VM of setting up a static IP, installing a VM, and in my case, setting up Pi-hole on Ubuntu. Um, I'm also playing with a bunch of other VMs. I might record those and do some videos on that, but I thought that this was um, really the most base foundation of, of how to use the KVM on Linux. It's it's a type one hypervisor, um, but like it, it seems like a lot that I read online, it's one of those sort of type one hypervisors, but I've been having a lot of good luck with it lately. So it, it's pretty cool to use something like that. So if you if you haven't tried that, or you wanna try something similar to, to a hyper uh, a type one, then the KVM is it's pretty, pretty good to use. 
Um, I'm going to try not to ramble too much. Uh, thank you guys for checking out the video. Uh, feel free to shoot me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you have some ideas, let me know. I'm, I'm on the fence about getting a uh, Raspberry Pi and doing some projects with that. I was thinking about doing like a security camera setup with a Raspberry Pi. I was also thinking about setting up uh, like a Linux distro on a Raspberry Pi and teach, having my daughter learn how to use it because she uses um, she has an iPhone and an iPad. So she's really good with the mobile stuff. But I was actually getting kind of curious. Like I wonder how long it would take her to um, not use a Linux machine, but to be able to navigate a computer but a computer that was Linux based versus Windows based because she does use they use like Chromebooks at school. I'm not sure if they have Windows machines or what they use, but I just think it'd be neat if she used Linux, you know, to tell people that I've got a my daughter uses Linux. What do you do? You know, so anyway, let me know if you guys have some ideas. Feel free to shoot them in the comments. Also, we've got a discord discord.medicx21.com. So hit me up. Give me some messages. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video.